Yo, what's up guys? Talking some Call of Duty DFS. The first slate ever is Friday on DraftKings. And I kind of like 10k, so I'm going to be trying to win this. I've been going through the box scores and the rules, trying to figure out every possible advantage. And I'm going to be posting projections on my site for free this weekend. So make sure to check awesome.com for those. And also hit the subscribe and notification bell so that you can get more updates uh, whenever we go live. So, alright. So Call of Duty Pro League, they go uh, to different cities each weekend and play matches Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Actually, it's going to be pretty cool. They really revamped the league this year. Uh, right now, they're playing remotely, of course. But I'm going to be a fan of the Chicago Huntsman because uh, I wouldn't mind going down to Wintrust Arena and seeing them. But uh, the way that Call of Duty DFS works and the way this Pro League is played are very much connected. They play a best of five matches, and there are three different game types, and each game type has a different set, set of scoring rules for DraftKings. So the constant is that kills and deaths are worth points. Um, the f game one is always hard point. That's like a king of the hill. And uh, hard point and also domination, the players respawn, so that's the modes that have the most kills and the most fancy scoring. All right, so hard point, uh, they have to occupy area for 250 seconds before the other team rec reaches 250 seconds. So theoretically, this could last a while if they're in a close game. And the closer it is, the more fantasy scoring will happen. In game two, they play search and destroy, very similar to Counter-Strike, where they have to plant the bomb or defuse it, depending on which side they're on. They play to six points. Whoever reaches six first wins that game. Game three is domination. They have three different flags. If you control a flag, you get points. If you get a kill, you get points. Whoever reaches 200 points first wins. Game four is hard point, and game five is search and destroy. So the real high scoring games are games one, three, and four, because those are hard point domination, and that's going to be relevant to our strategy here. All right, so I did uh, some breaking down of the box scores here. And of course, in DFS, we're talking a lot about stacking and how that is going to factor into your strategy. And this Call of Duty uh, has a very interesting stacking scheme uh, that's going to be really dominant in uh, these matches. So in most fantasy sports, you want kind of an uneven game but in call of duty you want a really close game because based on the game formats the closer it is the more duration it's going to have at least in uh hard point and that's going to lead to more fancy points for both teams so uh okay i i did uh some box score analysis and i found that on average the winning and losing teams in hard point domination are separated by about 30 fancy points and uh, based on this, I was able to figure out what, it, based on the match score for a team, what is their average fantasy points going to be. So if uh, we look at this, uh, you obviously don't want your team to lose badly. So 0 3 and 1 3 are both low scoring. But the, the second lowest scoring actually is going 3 0. Oh. If your team sweeps, it's going to be hard for you to have enough fantasy points to win. So that's why I think that game stacking or taking players from both sides of a game is going to be a very good strategy in Call of Duty. The highest scoring teams were ones that went 3-2. and two, And then 2-3 two and three and 3-1 three and one were relatively close. Because that fifth game, Search and Destroy, isn't that relevant for fantasy. So... What I'm going to look for as far as teams is we'll look at the sportsbook odds a lot. Uh, uh, right now in the U.S., esports betting isn't widespread. Uh, I don't think it's legal in any state yet. So I go over to Pinnacle. It's a European one. And they post the lines for the Call of Duty. All right. So one thing that you want to really look at is the over-under for the number of uh, games. 
uh, as I was mentioning, you really want five games. And as you can see, the odds of uh, this over 4.5 are you're going to be an underdog no matter which team you pick. But let's, uh, let's look at this team because uh, Atlanta Fays are very heavily favored in this game. And the odds of it going over four and a half games are um, plus 242, which is about 30%. The odds of the other games going over 4.5 are more like 40%. So you actually kind of want a really close matchup here. And because of that, this uh, this first game where one team is superior to the other might be a little bit less desirable for the game stack. Although they do have still a 67% chance of uh, playing that fourth game at least. And then let's look at what the odds are for the closest game on the slate here. Over 3.5 is almost a uh, 75% chance. Uh, I guess it's uh, more than that, sorry. More than 75% chance of game four happening. So what I'm really going to be hoping for in my Call of Duty lineups is that the over 4.5 happens. They play five sets because... As uh, you get that fifth set, that's going to yield really good fantasy scores for both teams. And you can stack up to five players from the same game on your fantasy team. All right, guys. So I hope this primer helps. When it comes to picking the uh, individual players, make sure to check awesomeo.com later in the week for my projections. If you like this explanation of how Call of Duty DFS works, make sure to click the thumbs up button on the way out. And thanks everyone for uh, checking out the video.